Yeah. Come on now, let's 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 get the move, folks. Let's come on, come on. We're we're back in it. We're 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 at another episode, episode three of of the Solidity series, guys. Welcome, welcome to Solidity Solidity series. What are we doing today? I think we're setting some ETH, if I remember correctly. We left off of a good good trajectory yesterday. You know, I've I've been enjoying myself with this series, guys. I've I've got a big old ass full of water here. You're gonna love the the vase that it's in, the vase, this fancy vase, if you will, this one glass what a beautiful beautiful life right what a beautiful existence so guys we're gonna do some ethereum let's get more granular let's keep it moving we're on a, we're on some good energy with this with the solidity series let's let's keep moving forward okay so looks like we're we're talking about storing the owner let's 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 dive in let's figure out figure out what we're going to do so let's talk about the address data type in solidity an address on the evm is a 160 bits long or a 40 bit or 40 character hexadecimal string. So it's 160 bits or 40 characters. That's what makes up an address, guys. You know, our wallet address in MetaMask, you know, the 0x, boom, boom, boom. Here's an example, one zero x all this stuff, boom, 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 boom. Okay, this is valid in solidity. We can store a fixed address. Guys, I gotta get this microphone closer to my face. Okay, so so we can, we can store a fixed address in our contracts if we need to. So we can go ahead and just hard code our address in the contract. We can also find the sender of the current message using message.sender. So MSG, one, it's part of uh, absolutely delicious, just side note, but second note, it's also part of solidity. <laughs> it's also part of solidity. <laughs> And it's a globally available variable that we can use anywhere in Solidity. So, so we can always do message dot boom, and we have a few things that we can we can pop out. We have I believe the sender, the address, the owner, maybe the data, a few things. So, so let's see. Here we are logging out the address of the account calling the contract. So, so again, we always we don't have to declare the MSG. It's just boom. It's always available. But let's let's. Let's see maybe what, what comes in this, this, this deal here. Let's go ahead and, and test the output. If we can run the code, console log MSG. Can you not console log and, and oh, we got to run a constructor potentially. Okay, so let's, let's build a constructor. Let's, let's muck around, see what we got. Well, let's console log MSG here and we'll put some semicolon at the tail end. Oh, still, still, we don't have a console log. Why, why are we not allowed to console log here? What's, what's going on? What is it? Is it the message dot sender? Do we need to import? Oh, that's why. Okay. Okay, cool. So I think that'll do where we can uh, owners not found, but let's, let's see what we got. Let's see. Let's, let's, let's see what we got here. We could console log something. Console log is not found, found visible. What else can we structure here or destructure? Interesting. Interesting. Let's just, let's just keep reading, right? I just wanted to see all the, all the message stuff with the, the, the MSG thing that we could see all the methods associated with it. So all right, so what is MSG? We'll take a closer look at the EVM in details. Let's take a peek see. Let's take a peek see. Let's see what we got in the EVM. Wait, this is this is this is what this is what we already this is what this is exactly the same page, right? Okay, so let's see. We want to create a public address um, variable called owner or state variable called owner on the contract. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say um, press public and we'll say owner. And I imagine we're gonna to need to build a constructor. Next store, yep, constructor, here we are. And we wanna assign the owner. The owner variable is gonna be equal to the msg.sender. Oops, okay, so so this will assign us. We can, we can, now we can, now we have this piece of data that gets instantiated when the contract is deployed. This constructor function is gonna fire off this owner being reassigned to the msg.sender. So then, so then our msg.sender, all that data is now stored in the owner variable. We know who owns this contract. The person who deploys it owns it is the assumed deal here. So let's, let's read, let's read. Since the constructor is only called once during contract deployment, storing the owner is not all too uncommon, especially if you have an administrative role. Of course, keep in mind that the admin role can infringe on the decentralized nature of your contract. It's kind of what we're avoiding, but sometimes you want admin privileges. It's your contract. Do what you need to do. Do what you need to do, you know? All right, so store the owner. Great job. Let's uh, let's make the owner payable. So this is one of those those uh, functions. We got the viewable. We've got the external view, private, payable. What was the other one? There, there, there's a few others. There's a few others. Okay, so we're going to be at the top here. We're going to be at the top. All right, all right, all right, all right. So receive the function in the latest versions of Solidity. The contract cannot receive Ether by default. All right. 
Okay. Seems interesting. So, so the contract cannot receive Ethereum. Excuse me. Guys, I just... I just ate, ate a whole bunch of, it's, it's like this Greek yogurt. It's, it's like, it's whipped up though. So it's, so it's not just plain Jane yogurt. It's, it's just like whipped, like real fluffy, just real light. It, it's proper. It's just the chef's kiss. It's the chef's kiss of yogurt. Okay. So in the latest versions of Solidity, contracts cannot receive ether by default. Interesting. So we need to make that a, a tangible thing. So in order to receive Ether, a contract must specify a payable function. This is another keyword which affects the function's mutability, similar to view and peer. Let's see how a payable function works. So we can append it with this payable tag, it seems. So we have function pay public and it's payable. Okay. So that way, if we send Ethereum to this pay function, it can now receive something because we've appended it with the payable deal. So here are the MSG value represents the amount of ether and way 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 i don't know if you guys have heard the rap the rap songs where people are always saying wait 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 in the background wait wait is this what they're saying is are they saying are they saying way are, are they saying wait for the ethereum to show up is, is that what they're really saying we want pieces of ethereum Potentially, potentially. I'll do my homework. I'll circle back on the next episode and let you know. Sent to the pay function. By simply adding the payable keyword to this function, it gains the ability to accept Ether. Once received, the Ether is automatically added to the contract's balance. No additional steps required. Billy May is here. We, there's no extra steps. There's no, but wait, it gets better. But wait, wait, it gets better. <laughs> So what if someone tried to send a payment to a non-payable function? The transaction will fail, sending the ether back to the sender. So it reverts the transaction. In the case above, we used the method pay as payable as a payable function. This means we have to call this function in order to send the ether to the contract. What if we wanted to send it directly without specifying a method or a function of methods and methods and functions are same, same. They're same, same, but different. Same, same, but different. Turns out we can do that too. So we can just do a receive. So any, any sort of value that's just coming in, we just denote it with the receive function. It seems that the contract knows that, that the, the contract's receiving funds will fire off this as kind of a fallback, I assume. Let's see. Okay, so you'll notice that the receive does not use the function keyword. This is because it is a special function like constructor, excuse me, constructor. It is the function that returns when a contract is sent ether without any call data, or when the call data does not match a function signature on the contract. The receive function must be external payable. It cannot receive arguments and, is, and it cannot return anything. So it's a void function, but we could probably assign stuff to it. So let's see, another option to receive ether without specifying a function signature on a contract is using a payable callback. We'll look at that in a moment, but let's see our goal. Your goal is to receive Ether, add a function to the contract that will allow us to receive Ether on a transaction without any call data. What is a payable fallback deal? Oh, you know what? We saw the details in the last one. I didn't realize there's a whole details tab. This, this would make sense. There, there's a whole details thing over here. <laughs> okay, okay, but let's, let's go forward. We're, we're, on, we're on part two. We're on part two here. So let's read about it a little bit. So the external visibility, uh, well, well, we can do we can do a little bit of both. Let's 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 do a little bit of both. Let's let's talk about a fallback function in a moment. Sorry guys, I'm moving my face around a whole bunch. Um, but let's 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 look at this. Look, looking at a fallback type function for a payable deal. But let's let's get us let's get us moving here with this this add a function to the contract that will allow us to receive ether on a transaction without any call data. So what we can do, I imagine is say receive I spell receive right see how do you how do you spell receive is it is it ei or ie there we go i i had it correct i had it I had it correct and it looks like we need to make it external payable and we can console log what the sender is sending i believe okay test it see what we got here all right all right first take drink first take drink we're back folks we're back we're back we're back but let's uh, let's look at the details real quick because I, I think this is relevant. And, that, and let's let's do both. So we have the receive function, and then we can also declare a function that's payable. But maybe maybe this one's not gonna fire off or pass the test for us, will it? Potentially it will. Potentially it won't. It looks like it is. No. Okay. So so we have a receive function, which is going to get fired off if we're not invoking anything from another contract. So so if we if we have this pay function, it's public. It's public but it's not, it's not gonna get fired off unless we specifically say use that pay method. 
This, it seems, the receive will work if we just send the contract Ethereum. No functions invoked. It's kind of a fallback deal. But let's double check. Let's let's read about these fallbacks. This is this is important because you don't want to send. You don't want to have a contract floating out there that people can send money to, and it just gets locked up in the contract. So no function gets fired off. It just sends Ethereum. I guess I guess the better of the two cases is the transaction gets reverted, so it doesn't the Ethereum doesn't get sent or the Ether doesn't get sent or, or whichever blockchain that you you're on. The native units native currency doesn't get stuck in the contract. Basically, that's what we do not want. Unless you're using it for that purpose, like a burner wallet or or making your currency deflationary. So let's let's think about this though. External visibility, or let's read about it. External visibility. We discussed the public and private visibilities. What is the external visibility? visibility and why is it necessary for the receive function? It's necessary because we're going to be externally calling it, right? So an external function can only be invoked through a message call from another contract or an externally owned account. In contrast, internal function call accesses variables directly from the contract's current states, or excuse me, contract's current execution context, avoiding the need for external inputs like call data. Okay, so let's let's kind of take a beat on that. So hold on. In contrast, an internal function call accesses the variables directly from the contract's current execution context, avoiding for external inputs like call data. So what I roughly imagine they're kind of saying here is is that's the contract being in contained with its own variable. So these this this variable owner is only relevant to this contract contract. Uh, the, the the class that we've denoted at the top or the contract we've denoted at the top. Um, that's the current contract's execution context, the, the state and memory and data associated to this contract. So, it, but what I imagine call data is, is another contract calling this, this contract, contract, contract. I know this, this is a lot of confusion. <laughs> I wish I had contract one, right? You know, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll have that. So contract two is over here calling contract one. I imagine if contract two is trying to call contract one, it needs call data to communicate what it needs to do, I think. So let's, let's, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. The receive functions requires external visibility as it's designed to receive Ether through a message call. Its primary purpose is to offer developers a function body where they can define logic for handling incoming Ether to a contract. Got it. Got it. So we, we, we kind of have that understood. Quite similarly, the fallback function also requires external visibility. What is the fallback fallback function you ask? This was kind of kind of our initial thought. So if so if someone just accidentally or or maybe you maybe it's part of your code, send send from contract two to contract one, but you didn't invoke the specific method or the specific function you wanted from contract one, this receive function is getting fired off. That's that's what it, I'm understanding so far. Okay, it's cool. So the fallback function is the function you're calling when no other functions come to the phone. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Well, joking aside, it is really quite that simple. When a smart contract receives a call with call data that doesn't match any of its function signatures, so if there's no functions, it's receiving this call data. Hey, fire off the, the function call. Well, we, we don't have function call in like like a function named call in this in this uh, contract, right? Now we do, but let's pretend we don't. Um, okay, so if none of the function signatures are matched or its call data is empty, the fallback function is triggered. This one, boom, okay. This can occur for various reasons, such as a typo in the function name, an incorrect argument type, or even for intentionally storing the call data for future use like a subsequent message call. Interesting. These blockchain guys are brilliant. They are brilliant, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. If the contract does not know how to respond to the data sent to it, it will invoke a fallback function or the fallback function. The fallback function is also called a special function and it looks like this. I'm, I'm curious. Oh, so this receive function is not the fallback function. I was, I was going to ask the, the very next question I was going to ask is, are they required when deploying the contract? Do you, are, are all contracts required to have a fallback function? And just like receive function, the fallback function must be external. It cannot accept any arguments or return any values. Unlike receive function, fallback does not need payable. Okay, with a payable fallback function, you can essentially replace the receive function. However, for the most part, it's not advisable. The two functions serve different purposes. That was literally going to be my next question was, what's the difference then? What, what is a receive function? What's a fallback? What's the difference? So when you create a receive function, it's clear you're accepting the ether on transactions without data. Excuse me. Golly. Golly. Let me get a little sip. So let's reread that one more time. When you create a receive function, 
It's clear you're accepting Ether on transactions without data. When you create a fallback function, it's generally for the purposes of handling function signature mistakes. Okay, so so it's not saying replace the receive function, it's saying do both. So you're accepting Ether without transaction data. Okay, so they could be used in conjunction from what I, what I understand, but it seems like this is just strongly for mistakes then. Mistakes or, or potential uh, misuse, but this is just 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 in case type thing, right? Let's see. Can you not do single quotes in Solidity? Is that not a thing? More questions. More questions, right? So it seems like the fallback is for just in case, and the receive may just be for receiving specific Ethereum. Maybe we want to do something, and maybe the fallback wants to do something else. As to maybe they both want to do the same thing. Hey, put it in their wallet anyways. You know, maybe maybe that's what they want to do. But but potentially there's there's differences for both. But we always want to keep track of a fallback function. It seems to handle mistakes. We always want to have error handling. So that that's kind of what I'm saying. It, it, it's it's like a try catch block potentially. Okay, cool. So so I I love it. I love it. I'm I'm falling along so far. So far I'm falling along. Okay, so transferring funds, we can make any regular function payable. This allows us to differentiate the purpose of the Ethereum coming into the smart contract. We can make any regular function payable. This allows us to differentiate the purpose of the Ethereum coming into the smart contract. Okay, so perhaps a contract has two stored addresses and we want to be able to pay each. So we have address A and B, both publicly accessible variables within this contract. We have a constructor that is receiving address A and address B, and we're just assigning it to address A and address B, so we can now access that in this, this contract. Okay, I'm gonna pay A. We have a public payable thing with a Boolean tuple. Uh, success return thing requires success is, is what I'm seeing here. So A.call the value of message.value. Ooh, ooh, we're getting, we're getting juicy, folks. We're getting, we're getting low, we're getting low level. We're getting, we're getting into the ones and zeros, you know? We're, we're getting into the firmware, you know? <laughs> this is, golly. Okay, so pay B, same thing, B call. Now, what, what, what is the call is, is what I wanna know. What, what is this? What is the B.call? Require the success deal. Okay, so we have two methods, pay A and pay B, which will transfer Ether to the respective addresses. It takes a UNT amount of way and transfers it from the contract account to the address. <clears throat> your goal, our goal, this is a team goal at this point, but, but your goal, transfer tips. Let's create a, a way to tip the contract owner. Create a payable public function or public payable function tip, which sends any of its received ether to the owner. Okay, so, so we have our owner. Let's go ahead and put our function here. So I'll say function tip. And what do we what do we want to see? It, it, it receives any ether. Golly. Okay, so we have a public payable function. And okay, so it looks we have a Boolean success call. And this equals our owner dot call. Uh, what do we got here? And then and then we say value and msg.value. So this is going to be our value here, but how do we how do we put it into the owner's address? Create a payable function tip which sends any of its received ether to the owner. Okay, is that is this what roughly what we do and then we require success? Interesting. Interesting. But this doesn't seem like it would uh, do what we wanted to do. So owner.call. What what is the owner.call? Is that is that a pending? Let's reread this for a sec, right? Or or run the test see, see if we're doing the right thing, but but let's see. Let's see. Oh, great. Okay. So, so we do, we did do the right thing. Let's, let's try to run it from, from memory without looking at the left side too much. I, I know it's like a simple thing, but, but I, I don't want to see it too much. I, I want to be able to understand from memory on this. So, so let's try one more time. So we want a function tip. We want it a, a public payable, right? Guys, I, I promise I'm not looking at the left as, as best I can, as best I can. And we want a Boolean success value. And this is going to equal our owner dot call just to get the syntax down you know it's, it's important it was say msg dot value and you can see you can see the cursor's doing the weird deal again type it on the right side of the cursor but that'll work that's fine and we want to require the success and boom now it's now it's back to working okay so i think i think that's exactly what we just did again looking at the left it looks like I did it right sweet okay cool cool so public payable so, so an external contract can send a tip to this function and it'll, it'll tip the owner. Cool. 
I, I think I think I need to understand more of this owner dot call situation. I'm not I'm not quite sure on why that just like allows the value to be incremented. I'm not I'm not sure how that necessarily works, but but we'll run with it. We'll run with it. Okay, so charity. Charity, charity. I just thought of the dumbest thing. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to say it because I'm going to get demonetized for this video. <laughs> but I feel like I could for, for, for the character quality of this video. <laughs> I, 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 I'm curious of what you guys think, think I was thinking. Comment in the description below if, if, if uh, you want to take a guess at what I was just thinking right there. <laughs> and, and maybe maybe I'll favorite the one that I, that I think or I'll, I'll favorite whoever's closest to it or something. Of, of what you th comment, what you think I was thinking. Okay, so so within contracts, that this keyword can explicitly can can be explicitly. We forgot some grammar here. I think can explicitly be converted to an address. You know, Alchemy University can't win everything. You know, they're 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 near perfect. Can't be a hundred percent, but they're they're amazing. So so we we got them. We got their backs here. Can be explicitly converted to an address. Okay, so this address let's see address this can be converted to an address and we can see the balance of it is is it is it of this contract address or is it of the sender's address at this point when i say address this let's see so using this can we can easily find the address and balance of the contract so it's the address of the contract okay cool let's take a look we have more details for the this keyword in solidity fun this and Solidity uh, gives us access to our contract itself. We can call this function using the dot operator. So we have this dot B. So it looks like we can access all of our, our contract for anything that we do public. So if I say this dot owner, I think I can access the owner as long as I invoke it, right? So so in, in my other functions, if I say, well, obviously here, we'll see why. But if I say this owner, like this, boom. Well, think I think that'll still work. We'll see. We'll see all the things associated to it. Okay. So calling this dot b will target the b function with an external message callback into the example contract. We generally want to avoid this behavior unless there's a good reason for it. So we don't really want to do it, but we know we have it in the back toolbox. You know, you know, you know, you got it. You know, you got it in the back, the back pocket. But it's not, it's not your, it's not your thing you, you whip out on the on the first date. You know, you got it in the back pocket. It's like, hey, let's go play skee ball. You know, but 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 you already got a plan where like, we're gonna go watch a fountain and get some ice cream. But just in case you got skee ball in the back pocket, you know, skee ball's fun. Skee ball, skee ball's a fun sport. You know, you know, it's it's, it's a good time. So okay, okay, let's get back to this. So our goal: let's take all the funds that were passed to the receive function and donate them to charity. We'll do this in two steps. First, modify the constructor to accept the new argument the charity address. Okay. So we, we're going to accept an argument of charity address. Let's see charity address. Okay. Next, add a new function. So wait, hold on. Modify the constructor function to accept a new argument of the charity address. Do we want to assign that to a variable here? Add a new function called donate. When this function is called, transfer all the remaining funds, funds in the contract to the charity address. So I do think we do want to uh, call that. So address public, and we'll say... Guys, I'm going to go back to, uh, we're going to get out of snake casing here. We'll, we'll go back to the trusty old, trusty old, uh, whichever casing this is, I, I forget. I apologize. Okay, sweet. So, so a camel casing. So, okay. So next add the, the function donate. And this donate function is going to be a, what is it? What is it? A external payable, I believe. External payable function. This function called it. And it's going to be uh, for all the remaining funds of the contract. So do we say... Uh, golly, is is there is there a funds this is is that a thing funds? So we had address, right? We have address this. That would be for all the things here. Do we have something like this, right? Potentially, but we donate it to the charity address. So let's read. Let's read a bit. So we have address address this dot balance. That's what it is. Okay, guys, they're power washing outside too. So if you hear something in the background, that's more than likely what it is, but I'll try to edit the audio so you don't have to hear it. Okay, so boom. So we'll say charity address, and then we need to do that that success thing. So this is gonna be maybe leftover, is, is gonna be that stuff. So leftover balance, right? Well, I, I can't really assign it like that. We need to make a variable. So we'll just leave it like that, but that's gonna be the leftover balance. And then what I wanna do is say, I believe, say bool success equals, uh, what do we have? Golly, so we have this dot call value msg.value right get all low level with it folks come on now 
We want to require the S here, but we don't want to, it's not the message value that we're actually appending here. It's actually going to be this, I believe. I think, I think, I think, I think, golly. Oh, we, we forgot a, a doohicker. Let's see, let's see, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Come on, baby, come on. That's good. That's that's good. I cannot believe we just gasped through that gas. What I mean, just freaking crushed that that external payable function. Look at that. We got the donate external payable function, the charity address. Guys, we're doing we're doing charity work here. We're doing charity work here. This is this is beautiful. This is beautiful. All right, let's let's keep it moving. This this I think is our last self destruct. Uh oh. Uh oh. So we got how many more lessons? Is is this our last lesson? I, I'm kind of bummed when it's the last lesson. Like I want, I want more. You know what I mean, I, I need more lessons because that is fun. That is such a good feeling when when it's like, oh, I'm kind of getting it. I'm kind of getting it. So I still got a long ways to go to to really comprehend everything. But but yeah, we're we're we, we got one Lego brick with another Lego brick now. You know, it's like sweet. We got we got two little Lego bricks and we're we're adding the third one. We're like adding the third one that connects them. That's what this episode is. It's the third freaking episode of, of, of connecting these, these bricks. So, so it's fun. It's fun. You know, and then, and then by the time we're, we're, you know, hopefully a couple more episodes in on solidity, we can, we can be, okay, how do we, how do we do ethers and, and web three JS and, and how does this work with the front end? And we'll, we'll have all this knowledge down from solidity to just dump into the front end and, and we'll be able to build something beautiful. So I'm, I'm super excited. All right, let's read self-destruct. Contracts can destroy themselves by using the self-destruct opcode. Opcode is what they were called in the, I think it was the first one is opcodes. Opcodes is the things I was looking for, the, the 5B, the OX, all these things. These, these are opcodes. Um, let's see, opcodes blockchain. That's what I wanted, wanted was the opcodes script code. What is an opcode? Boom, here we go. Okay, so yeah, there's this, what does it stand for? Operation codes, things like that. Okay, so we won't, learn these, but, but there's op codes. We, we can reference them here. But anyway, okay, so contracts can destroy themselves by using the self-destruct op code on the EVM. This op code actually refunds Ether in order to incentivize cleaning up the blockchain of unused contracts. Oh, that's good, that's good. So, so, so the EVM, they want to incentivize kind of cleaning up stuff. That's, that's a smart way to do it, to, to self-destruct used contracts. So there's gotta be a way to, to identify what contracts being used or which ones aren't. So. Let's see it in action. It's actually brilliant. That's actually really smart. So contract, we have a UNT countdown constructor, boom, boom, boom. So someone calls this tick function from another contract, it looks like. Boom, it'll start the countdown trigger. It'll start decrementing it, or maybe they can decrement it 10 times. It looks like call that function 10 times. We must cast to address payable here. So looks like they want us to, or the example shows to do some solidity methods to protect accidentally sending ether to the wrong address or something. Okay, so, and then we can finally append it with the self-destruct function after going through all the countdown stuff. So after 10 calls to the tick function on this contract, the contract will self-destruct. That is so freaking cool that we're learning this. This is, this is some powerful stuff. So you might be wondering, why would we provide the MSG sender as the argument to self-destruct? This address provides the, the sender, it looks like gas, or the, or the EVM's reward for cleaning up your contract. So, so we provide the self-destruct function gets all the ether remaining in the contract. Ether sent to the payable constructor will be refunded to the final caller of the tick function. So whoever's the last one to, to do the tick function. Before self-destructing your smart contract, you may want to consider the repercussions listed, listed in the details. So we'll take a quick, quick doozy, a quick gander over at the details. Let's see, see what we got and real quick. When this donate function is called, trigger self-destruct, boom, boom, boom. Self-destruct, we'll send all the remaining funds, boom, boom, boom. Okay, so hold on, let's, let's before we do that, before we, before we finalize our, our seemingly, I, I believe the last uh, lesson, hopefully there's one more, hopefully. Let's read, let's read the details. You know, this, this is what I'm talking about in this series is, is moving the ball forward slowly so, so our knowledge, these little bricks, they're solid, you know, they're, they're, they're proper. So that's, that's what we want. That's really what we want is, is solid knowledge moving the ball forward. So self-destruct repercussions, repercussion. When you call the self-destruct on a contract account, the byte code is cleared. The contract will no longer be able to respond to ether transfers. If you are going to use the self-destruct opcode, you should be sure that nobody will accidentally send ether to your contract in the future. Got it. So there's going to be a gap when you when you up, fire off this first self-destruct thing. You got to make sure that that P 
people won't send it there because if they do, there's no recourse of getting that back. It's going to be locked up forever, gone, gone forever, exist in the ether, EVM forever. Okay. Seems like Vitalik has a good, a good grasp of, of, of building a, a monetary network. Okay, so you might assume that once a contract's code is cleared from ad an address, that's the end of the story. However, with the later introduction of create2 opcode, you can now have the ability to redeploy the same contract code to the same address. Does this save the ether that might have been resent is the question. Unlike the traditional method, which realizes on the sender's address on the, on, on, or excuse me, relies on the sender's address and account nonce, creates two uses a salt in the contract creation code to determine the contract address. Intrigued? Check out this tutorial. I will check it out later, guys. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta power through this, right? But I'm, I'm very curious. I will definitely check that out. So instead of self-destructing the contract, you can, could consider setting a storage variables so that nobody can call the function. Then you revert the transaction if they try to call the function or send ether in the future. This is probably the safest course of action. Okay, so don't self-destruct. Just maybe trigger like a flag of like active contract or deactive contract as a Boolean thing. And then if it's, if you, you, fire a function that deactivates your contract, then you can you can kind of have more tangible control to, to reactivate it down the road if you want. So that seems that seems appropriate. That seems appropriate. I'm gonna fire this up though for, for me to, to digest down the road, you know, in a in a moment. Hopefully it's not a video and starts playing. Okay. Guys, I, I would highly, highly I'll I'll put this in the description by the way. I will put this link in the description below because it, it's interesting. But I'm not gonna go through it now. Um, okay. So your goal when the donate function Trigger's called trigger a self-destruct in this contract. So we will do it here. Heck of a donation, you know, destroys your contract, right? Okay, so message.sender is gonna be the one who's payable. Let's let's try. Let's try if that's gonna work. Let's see. Alrighty, cool. Guys, that's that's it. That's it. We learned so much stuff. We learned a lot in that that sending uh I think Ethereum bits of code, right? The self-destruct. Let's 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 look over again. So we can we could store the owner. We figured out on with a constructor, store store that in the owner's variable if we want, or some sort of I'm the owner or admin, if you will, contract deployer, right? We can name this whatever we want, right? Boom, that would work too. But we'll keep it owner just for congruence of this this tutorial. We we learned about that. We can receive the ether. We figured out the payable word here. We could tip, figure out how to kind of call a contract uh, function where we can we can adjust the owner's balance this way. Okay. We got a charity thing doing a similar deal. And then we finally figured out the, the self-destruct thing. And the charity was actually difference here is, is the owner was, was a value that was sent in the call data. The charity seems that the balance it's just the leftover balance that's just existing in the 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 contract so that that's the differentiating factor between those two and then and then of course we have the self-destruct thing so super interesting super interesting stuff guys I, I i love this i'm eating it up alchemy university you guys you guys are crushing it you guys are the best so i'm i'm excited what do we have in, we have reverting contracts we're gonna gear up for that on the on the next solidity series guys i love this i love this so thank you so much for watching this i will see you on the next one cheers